The point is, you can be fully delivered and still face temptations. The adversary will try to use the temptation to confuse you, undermine the Christ in you, and cause you to doubt the power of God with the intent of trying to convince you that you're not really delivered so you can keep living in sin. I have a word for those who are struggling with sin, a stronghold, or some troubling issue. Have you prayed for deliverance, but it seems you're not getting closer to a breakthrough? Have you been wrestling with the same problem for months or even years? Or maybe you're on the verge of giving up hope because you're still dealing with temptations, ungodly thoughts, or desires. Unfortunately, it's during those struggles that some believers give up, and that's just what Satan wants them to do. Why? Because it allows Satan to maintain sin as a stronghold in that person's life. What often happens is some believers will justify the sin by identifying with the sin. They'll say things such as, I was born this way. God made me this way. This is just the way I am. Let's say you're struggling with promiscuity. Well, that's a behavior you engage in, but it's not who you are. You see, Satan's society will help you justify the behavior by telling you you're just polyamorous. There's nothing wrong with sleeping around, but the Bible calls it whoremongering, and God doesn't want his children living that way. Satan wants you bound by sin. The Father wants you set free. So I'm here to say, don't give up, and here's why. Deliverance is a process, not an event. That's a word right there. If you really like this content, I would appreciate it if you smash the like button right now so this video can spread to more people. Thank you. Now the church has, to some degree, misrepresented or oversimplified the nature of deliverance. Some believers think that God will deliver his people in an instant. Some believers expect whatever struggle they have will disappear overnight. After they prayed, someone has prayed for them or laid hands on them, they think they will enjoy an instant deliverance. Instant deliverances take place, but they are the exception, not the rule. And here's why. A stronghold is something that has embedded itself into your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, and has become a part of your carnal self for months, years, or even decades. So when you seek deliverance or try to pray it away, nothing seems to happen in the natural. But understand, understand, and overstand this. You didn't get into or develop that sin issue overnight, and you won't get out of it overnight. Again, deliverance is a process, not an event. Now peep this. The Bible tells us deliverance may not take place as quickly as we would like, but given this truth in scripture, Exodus 23 verses 29 and 30 say, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. Deuteronomy 7.22 says, The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. What does this tell us? God can and does deliver his people from adverse circumstances. However, he determines the length of the deliverance process. We know the Most High is a deliverer. The Lord delivered the Hebrews out of Egypt in Exodus chapter 12, verse 27. He's described as a deliverer in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. Proverbs 21, verse 31 tells us deliverance is of the Lord. As a believer, deliverance is a byproduct of your relationship with the Most High. In the meantime, our job is to remain steadfast with our prayers continue to trust the Father, and stand firm on what Jesus the Christ did on the cross. For Romans chapter 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. You see, through Jesus the Christ, you already have victory over sin. 
your deliverance is already done in the spirit and must work itself out in the natural. This is why the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So don't be dismayed when you still have ungodly temptations, thoughts, or feelings. All those soulish and carnal impulses must undergo a purging process. It's your crucifixion journey, so to speak. Look, don't trip out over the temptation, thoughts, or desires. Little by little, the power of God and the Spirit of Christ are bringing your flesh under subjection. Why? Because deliverance is a process, not an event. I bet if you ask someone who's been clean and sober for 20 years, if they experience temptations, desires, or thoughts about returning to that addictive substance, there's a 99.9% .9 chance they say yes. The point is, you can be fully delivered and still face temptations. The adversary will try to use the temptation to confuse you, undermine the Christ in you, and cause you to doubt the power of God with the intent of trying to convince you that you're not really delivered so you can keep living in sin. Have you been delivered from something? And how long did it take? Let me know. Leave your comment down below. Now, I say to you, whose report are you going to believe? For the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So don't let Satan use your flesh to rob you of your deliverance. Be blessed. You have the victory.